Well, how's it going, everybody? Thanks for showing up again to this week's Thursday night live painting with uh, me and my wife, Ashley, here. Is we're both here to answer your questions. Uh, like we do every week, we paint usually a hood panel, uh, some kind of a helmet or something like that. Um, hopefully, you guys can learn something um, from some of the techniques that we do. But uh, I thought it was kind of fitting that maybe this week we'll do um, kind of maybe a kin block, um, kind of a memorial thing, maybe going off of some of the uh, different kind of uh, graphics that he had, um, either on his race suit or uh, on his uh, Mustang here. So I was going to kind of combine the two. I also had some stuff that's pre-cut out, and we'll get into more about this here in a minute, but kind of want to show you what I kind of have um, in mind as far as graphics go. I, I did cut out this Monster Energy logo, and uh, pretty easy to do. I just used my Cricut Maker 3, um, took a picture off, just just a snapshot um, off my phone, and then was able to do it, everything off my phone to print this thing out. So I plan on putting that right there. And then as far as this reference, and this is just a paper reference that I'm going to go off of. The uh, so okay. Once again, I took the this photo, and you can see it's kind of off of a jersey shirt. I think is what they had. This is like a Hoonigans kind of design. I don't know much about it. Um, I just know this is kind of like the design that I wanted to use. I took that, put it into the design space in the Cricut Maker Three on my phone, and then um, was basically without any kind of like editing skills or anything like that. I was able to print it out pretty good. Uh, it was good enough for what it is. I think that, um, you know, some of it's all recognizable, at least from, you know, some of this stuff. So this is just one of the pieces. I have some here, too. They're pretty cool. Just like there's the number 43 and that ghost there. Yeah, the diamond, the eyeball. So we got a lot of cool stuff here that we're going we're gonna to be able to use as um, graphics. But. I feel like the biggest thing that you guys will be able to take away from from this whole uh, thing is how I'm going to be layering the stencils um, in a certain way in between the paint layers. So I do kind of, like I said, I do have it planned out in my head, but that's I think that's the biggest thing that you guys are going to learn here is um, when to lay down the graphics um, and you know when to pull them off and when to lay down paint. And then I do have the some stars left over from last week that we did the American flag theme. My thinking here is because I was going to split it off right here. Monster energy drink right here. Uh, the rest of these graphics right there. And then my other reference would come into play. His uh, the Mustang hood. Um, I think this is called what is it called? The Hoonicorn. It's called the Hoonicorn. The, this uh, four wheel drive Mustang, all wheel drive Mustang. Um, I, I would, if I already did a flag last week or I'd probably maybe have done that in the center. Um, didn't want to go over that again, but I love the fact that, that, um, this kind of a flag design was on the side. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to do kind of that choppy, um, looking stripe design and then it fades into the stars over on this side. We'll do those in a light gray and, uh, probably dark gray or black. We'll be using a lot of different shades of grays and some black. Um, besides the Monster Energy Drink logo, we'll use some uh, really bright uh, greens in order to make that really pop. Last but not least, uh, obviously it wouldn't be a memorial tribute if it didn't have some kind of a date. Right? I mean, so I, I was figuring putting that there. I may change my mind. Um, but that's what I just at least planned right now. I was also kind of thinking down here, but no. Okay, so far that that's what I was thinking. Uh, but there we go. And right here, we got just the white panel. I have this white base coat with some clear coat um, yesterday, and I scuffed it down with some 600 grit. So it looks like we're ready to go. So I got some eighth inch tape. You, 
usually, I mean, if you guys watch my past lives, usually I run it this way and along that edge right there. This time I'm going to go ahead and run this on the other side. We'll go ahead and do that on this side as well. Okay, so that looks, that looks even enough. I'm going to go ahead and lay one more line because I want to make this like a jagged line rather than just a solid line. Uh, just something I have thinking. See if we can make something work here. I'm just lining that up, buttoning it up right next to that other eighth inch tape. All right, my thinking here is I did want to split this off, um, this line, but I did kind of want to make it jagged like this. Um, so using that as a reference. We'll take the an exacto blade. And I'm just gonna make just little cuts. Uh, hold on. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And see so what I did right there? As I just trimmed just like a little uh, graphic up in there. I don't know what to call it. But maybe you can see that better like that. Um, one thing I did notice in the, de in the design, and we'll be doing more of this because that's going to be coming up this side. One thing I did notice that's pretty important that when they're cut, um, they're always cut outwards like this. It's always pointing outwards. So you want to stay the same direction. So we'll, we'll pay more attention to that later once we do this side. But um, we're going to kind of mimic that on these little stripes because we'll have stars over here, stripes over there. I remember what I said there. Okay. You could measure these out, mark them out if you wanted to. I'm just kind of, I don't mind if they're different. But one thing is you just want to keep cutting them the same way. If you, if we want to keep it like that design. That one's a little smaller, but okay. So it kind of like puts like a little razor wire look to it. I've never done anything like that before. I actually really love that. I'll definitely end up using that technique again. A dovetail? All right. There we go. I'm actually going to be technical about it and call it something. Put in this dovetail right here. Oh, that sounds so good to you. I like mm -hmm.
All right, that was pretty easy. Um, got that look. That looks fantastic. Um, okay, let me gather myself here, figure out what's next. All right, so the um, the next thing we need to do. Where's that that monster logo? Very bottom. Okay, so I know I want to put this uh, monster logo here. So what I'll do is I'm going to trim this out. Closer, just this backing part. So I can get a better idea where I need to paint. All right, um, there's a couple of different ways. So basically what I want to do is um, I want the monster logo to be green and that's really the only color that's going to be in this whole thing. Um, we could we could have taken the um, negative of this and then laid it down and sprayed the green. Um, we could have done that afterwards, maybe uh, you wouldn't. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to actually plan for this being here. So we're going to lay down the color before we lay down the stencil. So um, it's kind of the plan here. That way, when we lay uh, the other darker colors, the grays and the blacks, we'll be able to peel this up and then we'll have that green underneath there. So in order to do that, we're gonna use uh, a couple of the base coat pigments, Limeline, um, the Limeline yellow and the bright green. So we have those two. Have some inner coat clear in these little bottles here so just basically clear base coat so it's one ounce it says yeah the instructions right here it's one scoop per one ounce sprayable so take a scoop of that well we don't we're not gonna have quite one ounce so we'll do like a half a scoop got some urethane reducer so you got to put urethane reducer if, well you got to put urethane reducer if you're using you know base coats uh, to be able to thin it out to make it sprayable so let's put the lid on this thing oh, I made a mess jeez okay hold on Don't want to touch nothing. All right, let's check this out. Oh yeah, okay. So we have, we have the yellow there. We're gonna go ahead and get the green mixed up. Same thing, clear base coat, inner coat clear, whatever you want to call it. Take the scooper. Put some urethane reducer. And the green good okay so uh that should look good we could have just go with the green if we wanted to but um yeah i don't know the green probably be good enough actually then if it happened the maybe i'll put a little bit we'll see let's get the airbrush cleaned out and loaded up
All right, so I'm using a uh, an Iwata Neo. Now I just uh, well, I'm gonna have to clean this thing out a little bit. If anybody has any questions, I can answer them now. We're gonna have a second. I can clean this airbrush a little bit. Okay, someone said, "How transparent is the pigments? Do you think if I was to lay a silver flake down and put the pigments over, it would work like candy?" No, it won't. Nope. You're gonna need a you're gonna need a candy toner for that. You could use it, however, to accent um, and do some other things like that. But if you if you're planning it to look like a candy, don't do it. Candies are in the works. Candies are in the works, yeah. But you can get candies, House of Color, Camco. You can get them at some one of those. Oh, yeah, it does. Let's see if it stays that look. Um, yeah, I could have, I could do that, but, um, on this one, I'm I'm kind of set on what I'm going to do as far as the, the design goes. The one that was asking about if you could do if you could use it as candy, he just said it's a bright green would be cool over some blake. Yeah, yeah, if it worked like that, but it, it, that doesn't um, it's not meant to work like that. It's going to give you coverage. It's going to cover cover up the flake. The sparkle will be gone. Okay, I think we're going good here. Oh, bubbled a little bit. I don't know what's going on with that. All right, let's do this. Take the green. Where did I set my lid? <laughs> there, I got one right here. All right. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of just roughly eyeball it. Um, I could cut all the way around this and kind of get a guide if I wanted to, but okay. So right here is where. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pre-planning for this um, this Monster Energy logo to be here in that color. So we need it at least that big. You know what I mean? So that could even run off the edge a little bit. Not too much. Need to go up higher. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Still up higher. Someone just has a question. They said, when you're spraying the glue for leaf, do you adjust the pressure on the airbrush? He's having issues with the glue puddling up. Yeah, so you're going to you're gonna want to spray the glue really thin and really light in light layers. Um, if it's puddling up, that means you're putting down too much at one time. Or you could be thinning it out too much. Um, that's probably not the case, though. You got to put it down thin like you would just like a tack coat. Um, in, at no point should it get wet to where it stays wet. It pretty much is applied dry. Okay, looks like that's going to do it. Get those edges a little bit. Someone said... 
can I mix the U pull standard hardener in my four to one mix for primer or lime line urethane reducer? That sounds like a no, but you have to say that one more time to me because I can get that. Say more time. Put it on the screen. Yeah, will you? No, you shouldn't be. You can uh, you can use the the urethane reducer in with the four to one mixture of primer um, to thin it out more. If that's the question, I'm guessing that's what it is. Um, but the only thing you don't want to to mix up is the hardeners, the two parts. Uh, you don't want to mix between brands on those. If it's a brand of U pull, you don't want to mix that with like another brand of of hardener. Um, lime, we currently don't have anything that has a hardener in it right now, so nothing would require a hardener if you're buying a lime line. It's just we're just base coats. Um, but yes, urethane reducer is uh, pretty widely used um, to thin either thin out base coats, to thin out your primers, to make them more sprayable if they're a little thicker. You can thin them out with urethane reducer. Um, clear coat, you can you know add usually some, sometimes 10%, maybe a little bit more, depending on the product, to reduce that out a little more to make it uh, spray better. But your producer is just a product to be able to get the material thin enough to spray down smoothly. And then basically, oh, basically it evaporates. Did you see that? I heard it. I'm going to get a little bit of bubble in here. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a good one. I'll just that. Man. Mm -hmm. That's okay. We don't need to worry about that one. Yeah, the problem is what I do is I've been using this same airbrush for both the waterborne, uh, the glue, and uh, my paint. And I have to clean it really good in between, like when you go back and forth. Um, I really just gonna get another cheap airbrush for the uh, for the glue like I used to. So I kind of, sometimes I'll use the same one, and I'll just clean it, but you gotta clean them good in between. Okay, we're doing good now. Someone we'll said- something. Someone asked, is there a reason you're not doing a black hood first? Yeah, uh, because if you go white over black, you have to put a lot more paint down to make the uh, white solid. You only need a little bit of paint in order to make a uh, black cover over white. So you'll have less of a paint edge, basically, you know. And then also these colors, like if you couldn't, you could spray that over black. It just wouldn't be quite as vibrant. I hope that don't happen again. And then someone else asked, do you change your needle size at all or usually stick to the 0.5? Uh, I just stick with the, this is the one uh, 0.35, I think is what this is. All right, I'm just gonna add some of the yellow in there. It ain't doing much, but brighten it up just a little bit. Okay, it's just a blob right now. Not much to look at, but once we get this logo down, Guy away. Okay, that looks good. Okay, I have some masking tape here. What we're going to do. I think that will do it. Yeah, yeah. Just gonna use that to transfer this to right there. Pretty easy. Like I said, this is not the only, like I said before, you can do this other ways. Um, I feel like this is the best way. Um, like you could have done this over the top after you did the graphics, but I feel like it's less paint.
Okay, Ashley, is that in the center? You tell me when. <coughs> Whoa. Whoa. They don't even need to be exactly in the center. Look at it. It's all jagged. Okay. Going right there? What do you think of that? Yep. You, you called it. <laughs> you called it. You said it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you got one over there. It's okay. We're going to make it through. Josh Hannon asks, um, thoughts on Sherwin-Williams finished coat, clear coat. Yeah, that's actually what I used to use. I know. What are you looking for? Why are you reading my question? <laughs> so I saw it there. Oh, what happened there? I pulled a little bit of paint. Okay. That's okay. That's not going to cause any problem. As long as I don't peel under. I may have been, I may have sucked out a little too early. It might have been a little, still, yep, still a little wet there. That's okay. Someone said, thoughts on Sherman Williams finish. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> that's still, still my job. job. Okay. Yeah, what's the question? <laughs> what's the, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I already asked answered that. I thought it was pretty good. I use it. I used to use it. That was my go-to clear coat. Okay, what am I? I'm trying to get my thoughts together here. Um, okay, I want to do um, a little bit lighter shade uh, on this. Maybe we'll do his. Okay, let's do that. I did want something that had his number on it right here. Uh, number 43 with the, the ghost on it. We'll do that right in the center and we'll leave that white so that can kind of stand out. Also, when uh, we do the date up here, we'll leave that white. So that's the only thing that's going to be bright white besides um, these two lines right here will be uh, the date and the, his number and the ghost. Someone wants to know what the beverage of of the evening you're pulling them out of the garbage can is that what you're doing over there i threw it away <laughs> so this is the first one it's a hill and then my second one's this one pretty good so far the first one half gone you like them first one's pretty good yeah the next one's a pill Someone wants to know, did you use a Cricut maker for the, for that? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, I took the, and I can kind of go over that now that I'm laying this down once again, real quick, for those of you that missed it. So this is what I took a uh, snapshot online on my phone. And I put that in the design space Cricut maker app, which um, allowed me to print out or a cutout, I should say. Um, and it cut out pretty good. Um, I mean, it's not perfect. There's kind of, I don't know. But I had to doctor it up a little bit. But other than that, it was, that's pretty much how I got it straight off online. So that worked out pretty good, pretty fast. I definitely, if you don't have a Cricut maker or something similar, uh, nice about Cricut is just you can, you can do a lot of stuff just off of JPEG photos rather than having to learn um, like all the illustrator stuff, you know? You know what I'm talking about, Ashley? Yeah. Illustrator? Yeah, it's, it's hard. You just have to learn how to use that. Yeah. Programming. Like you use a cricket, right? Yeah. Like do you like it? Mm -hmm. You're able to do t-shirts and stuff like that too, all kinds of stuff. You'll actually surprise yourself with how much stuff you can do with a cricket. 
Like I didn't ever knew I could. Like I knew I could if I learned the programming, but I didn't think it'd be that easy. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Make sure I'm doing that right. Someone asked. Um, they want to know how long do you wait for the glue on the copper leaf before you engine turn it? What's the window time? You don't have to wait if you, in fact, you should do it right after um, with the, with the limeline glue. Yeah, no wait time. And he's talking about when it's the, once the copper leaf is down, you got all your edges down nice and smooth. You got it all brushed out. Um, it, it's good to spin right after that. That's when you should spin it. Okay, so there's the number and the ghosty. We'll go ahead and use another piece of tape. Stick it just like that. Maybe stick that in the center somewhere. And that'll stay out. That'll stand out just a little bit brighter than the rest. The other ones will be um, a little bit of a, more of an off white. Now, I did that crooked on purpose because, you know, ghosts don't ghosts fly straight up. You know? How do you know? But yeah, I don't know. Have you seen a ghost? Not lately. Friendly one. Okay, so we got that. It's going to stay white. And then will you hand me his date I had you hold there? Oh, perfect. Okay, so, man, this, uh, I feel like it'd be easier. I'm just going to take these off and just lay them out. Um, hopefully they don't fly everywhere. Let's see. Take a seat. I'll take a seat for just a second. So I'm just going to guess on the, I guess I'm just going to guess, right? How big is this thing? Yes. Oh, okay. Here we go. We're going to put it right there. Look at that. Huh? Yeah. See, I could pull out the outside on this, but then these letters are, or these numbers are so small. I can just lay them out good enough. The thing is, is all these are going to be kind of random. So if, if it's off a little bit, it'll just go in with the design. Am I right? Ash? Oh, like three ones. Well, we ain't done yet. What is this, 21? 21. 21. Mm. Had a hard time cutting right there. Whoa. 21 slash. Nineteen. You know, fun fact, Ashley. Uh, Ken Block's middle name is Paul. Yeah, I know. Did you know that? That was my dad's name, because my last name's Paul. Kenneth Paul. Kenneth Paul Block. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, here's the dash. Oh, look at that. That lined up right in the center, because I can see right here. 
got lucky. See, it didn't cut all the way quite right there. What the heck? Here we go. I really hope this is looking okay. Can you see from there, Ash? I'm like looking at it like yeah. upside down. All right. Oh, yeah, looks good. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it kind of goes off a little bit, but it's going to work great with all these um, different figures around. Yeah, it looks like it says 111. Yeah, I can move it. Yeah, I can move it. Hopefully can without cutting it. There we go. Like that. Yeah, just so you can. Because that one's too far up. Up. Yeah, it's not slanted. Yeah, just so you can slant closer. Whoa, it twitched right there. Glad somebody's keeping me in line. Oh yeah, that looks better. Okay. Is it hot in here? Hold on, I gotta take my hoodie off. Look, Rob. Okay, I have some white base coat here. Black base coat, and I have some empty containers where I can mix the two. So these containers, I'll just pull out that because I don't need that little brush. We're gonna take the white. And then we're just going to take just a drop of the black. Oh, what did I do? Let's see. That might have been too much. Oh, that's okay. I think. Yeah, yeah that'll be okay. That was good. A little bit of contrast. I want it to be pretty close, but not exact. You know, I just wanted those two things to stand out just a little bit more. So I'm going to hit this with that off white. As you'd call it more like uh, light gray. We'll clean the gr green out of the airbrush. All right. 
And then that mixture was a little bit thick, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of urethane reducer. All right, so let me, uh, okay. Also, oh, what do I hear? Oh, see, it's a little bit of that pigment I got on there. All right, worry about that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just darken this up, that shade, just a little bit more. Someone said, are your powders pearl or mica? Um, it, well, it's a mixture of two. It's, it depends on what the what the color is. Some of it's pearl, some of it's metallic. Um, it just kind of depends on which one, which color you're speaking of. The This one right here doesn't have anything in it. It's just a straight pigment. Someone said we should make Time Warp t-shirts and sell them. No, you don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, I kind of want to look, make that uh, white look antique. I'm just going to put some lines up in here too. Same thing over here. Oh, no, you're good. Okay. Uh, maybe get a little more in there. That's not going to matter. We're going to hit that um, all with uh, in fact, this area is going to be black once we get these other uh, these other graphics in. All right, we'll just take a look and see what we got here. All right, we got a lot of cool stuff. Ladder. Uh, one thing was that bone I wanted to use. That's probably the biggest one. So I like to start with the, yeah, the bone was the biggest thing and it kind of could come off the top right there. Yeah. So I'll do that first. Some of these we're going to be able to get away with, and I'm hoping that we don't have to transfer them with the tape. We can just be lazy about it and just do this. Let's see. Maybe not. Let's see if that's going to work out or not. There we go. Just use our blade to trim right there. Because we're not wanting that. That's going to un uh, underlap. This is going to overlap. So, okay. So that's our first one. What else we got here? Oh, I love this one. The UFO. Take the UFO. You have that saying, just don't die. I think I saw he wore a lot of clothes or hats that said that on there. Yeah, that was his kind of saying, I think. He had a lot of different sayings. Mm -hmm. uh, one was like, I can't remember. I don't want to say it because I might get it wrong. But uh, yeah, that was one of the sayings. Yeah. That's not mine. That's not mine. This is all just his. Off of the hoon uh, Hoonigans. Hoonigans. Let's see. We'll put this guy right here. Looks great. I think what makes that look so good are these little laser beams. I'm just going to pick those up real quick. Yeah, 
Is that what that is? A little, yeah, like a shooting arrow. Yeah. Space Invaders. Have you ever played that? Yeah. You, just, you have one of those? Yeah, these little ones are definitely easier just to pick up on their own rather than trying to use transfer tape or any kind of tape. Whoa, man. Oh, there it is. It flew away, but then I found it. Blue. It actually kind of, yeah, popped away or something. Wasn't wanting to go. Yeah, that looks cool. Look, kind of got that one off. That's okay. What else we got here? Ice cream? Let's see. Is there a... some ice cream? Where should we put the ice cream, Ash? Right there? I don't know. It's ice cream. <laughs> Looks like ice cream. Oh, it's ice cream usually don't have these heat waves, do they? <laughs> That's what I said. It's an ice cream. What the room. hell is it? Ice cream or poop. You have a funny way of looking at things. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I gave it up with these things. So I'm like, what the oh, hell? Yeah. That's not right. All right, I got you. Trim right there. Don't want poop on our star. That's what's going to happen. The star's going to go right here. What else we got here is cool. Definitely, uh, I don't know, Hoonigan. Probably won't do that. Let's go ahead and grab this skull guy. Whoa. Do a backflip. <laughs> well, shit, I don't know. I didn't look at these really that hard when I printed them. I was. They don't know that ice cream is your favorite thing in the world. Yeah. Of course, you'd see ice cream over poop. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. That's ice cream's way better. Here's a little, like, a paint splatter. That looks awesome. We'll go ahead and include that, just like right here, to kind of fill in that spot. We got zigzag thing. Put that in right there. Registered trademark. This stuff's crazy. Hello from Brazil. From Brazil. Awesome. Gerald Paul said. Gerald Paul. Your videos inspired me, and I went out and bought my first airbrush kit today. Oh, awesome. Same last name. Good for you. You'll see that it's not that hard. You know, you just got to make the mistakes sometimes. We haven't really made any mistakes besides the fact that I didn't clean my airbrush before this live and then the, that little piece right there. Do you ever clean your airbrush? <laughs> no. <laughs> now I, I need to. Yeah. I was hoping it was going to be clean when I looked at it. I was like, oh, no. I started to panic, actually. Some friendly ghost is going to come in here and clean your airbrush. All of a sudden, it's clean. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Might happen. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks like it was supposed to be spider webs. I'm not going to use that. Um, what do we got here? Oh, this thing's kind of cool. It's like a flower. We got a whole other sheet of stuff over there, too, so I don't want to use too much. Where am I at here? Which side's sticky? We'll put this flower down here by the monster. 
Uh, it's going to have a little bit of green in it, but whatever. It'll kind of have maybe a glow. Who knows? That might be all I'm going to use on that one. Let's see. Ooh, this little... Uh, this, what do you call this? This chain sprocket. Ryan would know. A uh, little chain link. There we go. Oh, I'm going to pull the center out. Maybe you'll see it better. Yeah, it's just a little link for a bike chain. Okay, what do we got here? We got an eyeball. We got a ladder. We got, I like the ladder. I like the, the fact it's big. I'm not going to, I'll probably have it hang off the, the edge like this or something. All right, what do we got else? We got uh, an arrow. Ooh, we'll point that right up towards that date. Come on. There we go, I like that. Um, I don't know what that is. It looks cool though. We put that right there, kind of by the UFO. It kind of looks like a planet. Got some dice or a cube, but it's really dice. We'll pull those little dots out. We'll put that. Put that maybe right there. Those things are tiny. It might have to be a one. Okay, that'll be a two. I will include the heart in there too. Let's do that. Is there a trophy? Uh, yeah, there's a trophy. It looks like it kind of looks weird when it got cut out though. Mm, what about? The trophy looks, I don't know, maybe. What about the lightning bolt? Yeah, where is that? Oh, oh yeah, that, the lightning bolt's awesome. I like that eyeball too. We definitely need that. Ooh, we got this pipe right here. Tobacco pipe. Hmm, if I can salvage it, let's see. Oh yeah, I got room for that, I think. Get up there. There we go. Get the heat waves. There's a spring. Mm -hmm. It's by the uh, arrow. Like a squirrely looking thing. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. You talking about this letter eight right here? Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. Well, uh, let's not put that there. It's an infinity sign. It is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't it's freak it. I told you I didn't know what any of this stuff was. <laughs> Dude, we got to put the KB on there. I just barely saw that. Yeah. 
Nice. That thing. Yeah, I still can't find it. It's by the arrow. This eyeball. I love it. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, right here. Oh, I am? Where's that? It has the thoughts. Kind of like the spaceship had. Oh, it's crying? Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to do that then. Yeah, let's just stick it right here. I'm not going to do the drops. He don't need to cry. You've got a cash sign. You really can't tell on that one. It's by the arrow. Up by the ladder. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Sign or a star, the, oh, the star is cool. Let's grab one of those. That might be the last thing up here. Yeah, that looks that's looking covered pretty good, pretty close to what our reference was. There's some words, there's a triangle oh, below it, says loud. Ghost. Now I like this diamond. I'm gonna do that one. Like a screw. Uh oh. What happened? I don't think the diamond's gonna make it. There's a screw by the ghost and the infinity sign. And there's a dollar and a horseshoe and a pig. You see it? By the ghost? Yeah. I can't really tell what it is though on this. Um, I'll do this X, I like that. Where else? It's getting pretty full. Let's put that right here. Uh, maybe got something else small. Equal sign. Couple of those. Avocado. Avocado. Uh, I don't see that on here. What in the hell do you think it's avocado? <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. see. Right there. I don't know. Okay, I think that's all we're gonna do. Maybe it's one one more small one, maybe to fill in right here, and I think that's gonna do it. Let's do that star again right there. Okay. Whew. Got that done. Make sure everything's stuck down. Let's pull this out right here. Come on. There we go. All right. So that's something similar to what our reference is right there. We just have um, just a bunch of random. Oh, the pig? How come we didn't even see the pig? Oh, it's probably too thin when it cut it out. See, like it did a good job with everything that was thick, but if you look at this really thin pig, I couldn't even see it on there. Couldn't even recognize that's what it was. So it does a pretty good job, but it's not going to cut that, that quite that good. All right, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go back to my reference here. Um, I'll probably do the stars kind of lined up, maybe just following because the hood line's right there. It's obviously a different hood. So I'll just run these stars up this way. I feel like that'll look look pretty good.
Ooh, what kind of that? It's this chick. Oh my gosh, that can is amazing. You're going to have to show that one. You're going to have to drink it down a little bit. Oh, you got your mug. Oh, I didn't show it. You showed that one? Oh, that's okay. If you showed it, you showed it. I'm going to double show it. All right. Uh, looks like that one's a little too far. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go, though. Not to be able to tell. I thought it might have been a mermaid. She was a mermaid that I can see she has a leg. It's not a mermaid. No, it's okay. They said they want to see the German beer. <laughs> they want to see the chick. Okay. He thought it was a mermaid, but there's one leg in the back. There is? Yeah. Oh, there is. Hmm. Kind of looks like you. Oh! Sorry. Looks like me? I think so. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's me. All right. That looks good. We could do another part of one there, but we ain't going to worry about it. Uh, maybe one more right there. There we go. So far, so good. All right, we're going to go back to our... Uh, nope, I'm wrong. Let's grab... See, I was going to see if I had a little bit thinner tape than this, but I think this is going to be just fine. No. All right, so I'm just going to take, I think this is three quarter inch. And what I'm going to do, what do I got there? Yeah, that looks fine. I'm just going to go ahead and run these lines. Let me, I guess I should show you before I'm doing that. So I want to do these right here, these stripes. What do we call them with dovetails? Yeah, dovetail stripes. Not duck. Ducktails, oh, that would've been better. Dove. <laughs> Ducktails? Dove. I love birds. For this, I'll go ahead and take the quarter inch. Uh, do I want a quarter inch? You know what? Now that I look at that, I'm going to go with the eighth inch. And I'm just going to line on both sides of this. Just kind of butt it up next to the paper tape there. Before we cut those, we'll go ahead and just line these all out.
just line out the rest of these with the same eighth inch like we did that first one. Two more. What's that? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be able to find the time. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Too much to do one time. Mm. All right, so once again, we're gonna go to where um, it dips in to, to where it kind of goes over the top. So we'll go here and then we'll go here. And then we'll end up pulling this one. Oh, that could have had more of a slant to it. But uh, then we'll do the same thing here. Move this. Okay. And then uh, let's see, we'll do right here. I'm just kind of, I'm not doing it in any way. If, I just want to make sure that um, it goes over the top. I do it the same way every time. This one will go this way. Is he going to drive you crazy? Come on. He doesn't want to come up. No, I got to go from their side. I'm doing it right so far, I think. This one, and then that one's already like that. That can stay like that. That looks fine. Same thing here. Should have been, yeah, that's okay. Someone says, what's the difference between candy and a pearl? It's been confusing for me when looking up products and trying to understand how to use them. I understand candies more, but pearls not so much. Yeah, pearls, um, 
pearls work well in like a uh, inner coat clear that um, you spray over the top. Kind of, you, you can use them just like a candy, but um, you would just take the pearl, you put it in the clear base coat. Say like you wanted a pearl white, um, you just you would lay down the white base coat. You'd put the pearl in the clear base coat, and uh, you know reduce it out and use it that way over the top. Um, you can pretty much you, you kind of a pearl is kind of a thing that you use at the end. It's like if you're going to do any kind of detail work or anything like that, you, usually you would put the pearl in at last um, towards the last stages. Like this, we could put pearl on it after we're all done. Um, or at any stage really, but it'd be better to, after we're all done, a little bit of pearl and the clear base coat, spray it over. And then it would have just a little bit of a sparkle. You, you can use it in a lot of different ways, but it's not really like a, it's not like a, a paint that covers, you know what I mean? It's more like a, an effect, a shimmer. So you, you really don't use it the same as like a paint or a candy. You use it kind of like a candy, like I said, but for different reasons. Um, and usually it's for like ghosting effects and stuff like that. Well, someone else asked, will base color affect the color shift powder performance, or do you recommend a certain color for the base? On the powdered pigments? I believe so. Um, you can uh, you can use any base you want on the pigments. Um, if you start with a lighter base, like a white, uh, it'll get brighter faster. Um, but no, it shows up over black, too. Yeah, even blacks, but it just takes more to cover over that. So uh, the thing is with the pigments, they're meant to cover um, unless they're like the metallics. You can kind of once again use them kind of like a pearl and you can dust them over the top. Um, I did that one wrong. Let's go ahead and cut this one this way. But uh, yeah, did I answer that question? I kind of got off on that. Do you recommend a certain color? The base, they say. Yeah, well, it, on candies, definitely a silver base, or you can use any kind of a light pearl base. Um, definitely not black in that case, but for the for the base coat pigments, you can use whatever base you're look you're look you're using. So it kind of depends on if you want it that color, then you can start with a primer if you wanted to, just a primer gray. But just keep in mind, dark dark colors to cover with pigment over the top could take more layers and if you're doing graphics it will take uh more layers causing it to have more of a paint edge but you can use any any base ground color i usually just use yeah black or white silver. or silver but really not even much silver it's mostly just black or white well, silver for candies nice. and yeah, yeah. All right, that looks pretty good. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. What we got here? Let's go ahead and cut this one. All right. Yeah, that got a little funky right there. I'm not sure what happened. We're going to leave it. I've got to mess up something on this thing. Okay. All right, so we're almost there. We're going to move to our darker shades now. Maybe the airbrush cleaned itself. Nope. Joe's home for the night. <laughs> nope. Think he cleaned your airbrush. Dan said, always taking us to school. I appreciate so much of the time you and Ashley take out of your evening for us. You're an inspiration to us all. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys being here for sure. You stole my words. You can say it again if you want. We appreciate you guys being <laughs> here with us. <laughs> okay, let's grab. Um, so I did want to do this uh, almost black, maybe a really dark gray. And then right here, I'll do black in the center. So um, I'll go ahead and do the dark gray first. I think I'm going to have to mix that up, though. So just like we mixed up the light gray color. We're just going to use more black and less white.
Now keep in mind, it takes more white to make a color change in black than it does the other way around. Mm, let's see, is that? Yeah, that's pretty gray. Maybe a couple, maybe a little bit more white. Okay. Raining. Oh man. It's supposed to be a big snowstorm. We're gonna need some urethane reducer in there as well. Chris gave you a super chat. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Thanks Chris, man, I appreciate that super chat. Okay, we have this dark gray. So the nice thing is, is since we're gonna go black with this, we're not gonna have to mask this up. We can get overspray on that because we already know it's going darker than this. We are gonna make want to make sure that these stencils stay stuck because we don't want underspray under those. You know, we want them to be nice and crisp. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't hold on. I'm going crazy here. Popping off your lid again? Almost. That's scary. I'm actually waiting for it this time. How do you know what I'm doing? <laughs> so, tell them that trick. Yeah. Scanning and split. Yeah, it's like yoga style. Yeah, yoga pizza. Someone asked if you'd bring your paint before it goes in there. Um, I usually don't. You can, though. Definitely a good idea. I want this to look a little bit streaky, though, because that kind of gives it a little bit of an effect. All right, we'll go ahead and do this side, too. Somebody asked, for the prep cleaning, is glass cleaner better to use than rubbing alcohol? I think so. Plus, he likes the I've never smell used rub of the glass cleaner. Oh, yeah, it's good. I think it does a better job, though. I don't know. I've never used alcohol for anything. I, I know that people do, but... All right. Okay, let's uh, make sure we get our edges here. That looks good. The top. Get all that with the black. Okay, that's looking good. Uh, let's, you know, I could probably go in there with black. Yeah, let's do that. I'll then put a little shadow there. I think that would look fine. Yeah, I like that. So I'm not even going to mask off this way. I'm going to go ahead and let that shadow this outer line. I feel like that'll look good. Can you just flip everybody off? Did I? No. Your wife's carving. All right, we have straight black right here. Some more reducer. Um, 
Should they use separate airbrush for acrylic paints? I would for sure. Unless you love cleaning your airbrush. Or if you have a ghost friend like he does that cleans his. <laughs> no, I only have mice. And they don't do nothing. I'm on. In fact, I thought I heard something over there. Don't say that. I think I got one. I think I got one. Okay, so we're going to fill this uh, center part with black. I'm gonna go ahead and thin this out just a little bit more. Someone asked who you do your foot for. It's um it's not for anybody. But I think they're saying because it's doesn't have a date. Oh, uh Ken Block. This makes me want to pull out a paint gun so bad. Almost got it here. Oops. That's how you make the art on the board. Yeah. On the stand. It's by your foot. Oh, hit the ground, huh? Uh oh. Told you there'd be something. Got a little drip right there. Oh. Whoa. All right, hold on for a sec. Well, it bubbled out of my my airbrush lid again. I'm going to dab that. Usually I'd let the paint dry, but this is going on the black. Maybe I won't touch that one, but so I told you something was going to happen. Why is it acting up? Well, because I didn't clean my airbrush very good. All right. Lesson learned. <laughs> Next time I'm going to be ready. Is it a lesson learned? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Let's clean this up. We're almost there. We just need to, like I said, I just want to break out my gun on this thing. Yeah, somebody said two, what is 
I'm just living on the edge right now. It might happen again. Yeah. But you know what it is? It's more build, though. Let's push that down. It has a lot more build. You can you can layer out the airbrush paint. Said, yeah, super thin. We <laughs> this one's an easy fix, though. I can put a bolt hole in here, and you never know. But it goes to show you can always fix it, you know? Not the end of the world. You can turn on that fan, babe. I'm almost actually almost done with this. It doesn't need to be full coverage. I'm not used to smelling this stuff all day long like you are. <laughs> You tell yeah. Yeah. All right, that's going to be good enough. Uh, it doesn't look like much right now, but we'll go ahead and peel back some of these stencils. Nice thing about these is um, you can see like over here when I pulled that off, I ended up poking the paint and scratching the paint off. These things are a lot more forgiving when it comes to plastic razors. Yeah, the plastic razors, yep. Rather than using a razor blade or uh, an X-Acto blade. All right, nice, that looks good. Let's go ahead and... Someone said, you should do a Miami Vice-like theme once, one night, and with Adam's music choice, that seems like it would be right up his alley. <laughs> Somebody knows me. Uh, yes, that would be, the uh, paint job sounds amazing. That's not what I wanted. I left a little line right there. That looks like on all of them right there. Let's see. The nice thing is I cleared it. If I want to get rid of it, I could just scratch that off. But we'll see how it looks. It might go along with the design.
Yeah. Yeah, I could if I wanted to. Um, man, I really should have just taped that off, like remasked that. I thought I had that closer, but like everyone has a line. I kind of figured that happen. Uh, in real life, I would definitely, when anything butts together like that and you don't want to overspray, you would put a little uh, tape over that, bridging the two. This one has real bad. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have this, this piece of tape, that piece of tape butt up against it, but you can never get it perfect. See how I butted that up? Left that line, a little bit of underspray, overspray, whatever you want to call it. But um, it's actually, uh, I, I'm probably going to, I don't know. We might scratch it off. We'll see. I can't see what's a, oh, here we go. Looks a little rustic, right? Let's go ahead and pull these off. This is what's gonna be the original white. So I was wrong. In order to, if, to clean those up, we would scratch back to this white. So that's not possible. We're going to have to leave that overspray. That's too bad. We'll learn that. You know, when you butt two pieces of tape together, make sure you put a third piece of tape over the top. Huh, Ashley? Yeah, I know. Well, I knew that actually, but, you know, I break the rules. Hmm. I would have to hear it, I think. Oh yeah, that that off uh off white kind of light gray looks really good in contrast with the, the white there. Okay, cool. Let's start pulling some of these off and reveal what this thing looks like. It's gonna kick you off. Yeah. Yeah, dovetail. Thanks, Cheddar. Someone says they, they swear they hear that song a lot of times when you're doing your thing. <laughs> so we'll have to listen to it when we get on. Someone said scratch back is a good technique. Yes, it is. Only if you're scratching back to the original shade, that would be scratching back to the original white. Exactly. There's always a way a way out. Usually, uh, sometimes you do have to start over. Um, but uh, yeah, there's usually a way out. You can fix stuff. Yeah, I'm glad you guys can learn stuff like that here because that's I think the most important thing. Some people would take one little drip and just be done. Like, oh man, that's it. But we. I think we dripped on this thing a couple of times. The last one. I think we might just keep going. Like, just keep messing up. What do you think, Cash? <laughs> I'm okay with messing up. Sometimes it 
true, and sometimes it ends up being better. Yes, I love to do that. Um, you know, on st on little stuff, I try to get away with um, just doing you know one or two sessions, like one or two layers. But clear coating it in between and sanding it um, with six hundred grit, cleaning it up and, and going again on it. As far as fixing overspray or or uh, adding more graphics, because literally, if we were to add more graphics at this point, we would have it paint edges to deal with. And once a paint goes over a paint edge, it, it'll it pick it up. If you're using like metallics or silvers or any kind of a pearl, it'll pick up that edge and you're not gonna want that. It's not gonna look, it's gonna look like, a, like an error. So uh, clearing in between, I always say, it's kind of like Photoshop, like adding a layer that you can erase back to if you need to, you know. And we would have been able to do that in this case, but the fact that we did put a little bit of an off-white on that before we we laid that out, um, we would have been able to do that. But it's okay. So let's hear it. Is anybody out there? Um, anybody out there working two jobs? Anybody out there work like a regular job, and then maybe when they get home, they uh, then maybe they do some work on a bike or something like that as like kind of like a side gig, side hustle. Someone said, so it slick work says, "Hey Adam, I've just done a full flake pattern job on my hood, roof and tank." Thinking of clearing the whole car before base, just straight clear over the primer. Have you ever done that before? Uh, I haven't, but I don't see any problem with that. That's, come on. Yeah, maybe somebody knows something that I don't know. They can chime in. Um, but, yeah, I mean, clearing over primer, as long as it's sanded and prepped, I see no problem with that. And someone said, are you going to shade the white stripes with light gray? These right here? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I don't plan on. I don't plan on doing that. Ethan Blackwood says he works full time and in my spare time, I paint custom bikes on the side. Been doing it for 17 years now. Oh, really? Right on. That's, you know, you can make pretty good money even if you do it on the side. Like you can still have fun doing it because you don't do it a whole lot. Like once you make it a full time gig where it's, it's it has to pay your bills, it turns into a little bit different of a game. It's not quite as glamorous because now you're looking more at the money and paying the bills and rent coming up and paint material supplies. Um, but definitely the guys that are doing this as like a side hustle, like even if it's out of your garage or something like that, whatever, that's all, that's where I started, you know, just out of the garage. Um, 
man, you can make some really good money. And there's a lot, there's a lot of customers out there. And really, that's like, man, man that's, I think that's the best thing I hear because I'll get um, people will hit me up with like pictures and comments and stuff about, you know, thanking me for the YouTube and the stuff that I do. Um, but man, they're getting so good so fast. It's uh, really, it's just really cool to see. And then some of their stories behind it, you know, that's really, you know, we might be getting into hard times. That's what they say. If you have this side hustle with you and you learn how to do it, even pretty good, um, you can make money doing this stuff. Like Austin Payne just, just says, Austin Payne says, 27, I opened my own shop two years ago doing paint body restoration shop. So I work full time and side time doing custom work. Yeah, cool. So he's still in the industry. And yeah, I, know, I know a lot of guys doing that too, that they're, you know, collision painters and regular, you know, painters. I, should, I say regular painters, but some other jobs are harder than what we do. I'm trying to match those colors and deal with those customers and the blends and the color matches i couldn't i feel like sometimes custom paint is easier but they have the hard stuff down like the gun control they they know how to lay out paint really nice um and you know a lot of them are moving really quickly too it doesn't take much it doesn't take much you just need to practice a little bit another one says larry maple says work full-time trying to learn about painting as a hobby bought my first bike then found your videos yeah, right on. And Slickwork says, I own an outdoor storage business for trailers, RVs, etc. Also just had my first full car paint job roll in Slickworks paint shop paint shop last night. Yeah, so first full paint job. How awesome is that? Dan says he works eight to five, Monday through Friday at Napa. After work, I'm a husband and a father while trying to start my own business like yours with paint. Late nights, little sleep, but it's worth it all for the end goal. Absolutely. Yep. It's super fun. It's a uh, very, very rewarding. It's, um, you know, once you know a few things, it's not too hard to get to this point. You can see where we just took the, a white panel. I mean, this is nothing really too special. Once this is cleared, it might be, you know, it's going to look a lot better than this, but uh, a couple more, uh, two, one, three, Steph fella said he works as a, as a chef trying to learn airbrushing and pinstriping as a side hustle, but need to learn more. That's why he's here, by the way. Thank you. Hard because of the materials cost, but, and then Wayne Reck, 20 years old, custom motorcycle painter here, working on Harley graphics while watching you. Well done. Helmets are fun too. Yeah, that's all great. Uh, uh, just to address the material bill. Uh, yes, it is. It is crazy, but um, your customers should understand if you tell them like paint is expensive, material is expensive, sandpaper is expensive, tape is expensive. Everything that goes into these is expensive, especially if you're starting out and you don't have already a stock. You know, like I have every candy color or I did and, you know, it took me, well, 800 bucks, I think, to get to that point. I didn't do it all at once, but. If you understand some tricks and how to make, mix your own paint and maybe not get caught up in some of these big brands and these colors that they're mixing up, I mean, they look great. I'm not going to lie. They're, they are amazing colors. Um, the videos are, are they, they make them look great. But is it worth the, I don't know, I haven't priced that paint for a while. And I, I've heard, you know, a quart could be over a 200 bucks easy, you know, or even more than that for some of these specialty colors that they're charging. Um, it's just crazy. Uh, you can mix up these same colors with in small amounts um, with concentrates and some of these ready to spray stuff that people are, uh, some of these companies are selling. They're just overpriced and you're not getting enough out of um, for your money. Yeah, a, a, a quart of clear base coat, Intercoat Clear costs you know, $70, $75 by time shipping. And then you have the candy, which is 55 bucks to $75, depending on what color it is. But that's a concentrate. That'll actually go a really long way, especially when you're painting motorcycle parts. Um, just those little cans could last a long time. So by, by um, 
being smart about your materials, um, trying to spray out of an airbrush more than like a paint gun. Also, you know, using candies out of an airbrush, you can make them last forever because you're just spraying it on so light. Um, but just those few things, um, you can use, a maybe a more of an economy clear in between your clear coat sessions. So maybe, maybe you're going to use finish line all the way through and that's fine. And I, I do that too. Um, that's, a finish line polishes upgrade at all. It's, it's really good and it's affordable, but if you want to use U pole, which is, I think you can get that for like 80 bucks, 85 bucks for a quart. You can use that as, um, or I'm sorry, a gallon. Um, you can use that uh, as the, uh, the mid, the mid clear sessions. Um, and that's fine too. You know, I, I, I say that because I know, because I've done it for years. Some people say, why would you mix products? Well, you're really not supposed to if you're mixing them when they're wet. You know, you wouldn't mix a hardener of one company with the clear coat of the other. That's just not going to work. It's not the same stuff. But if it's drying and it's sanding, I've never had an issue with that. So uh, heads up, some of these companies want you to use, you know, their urethanes, reducers that are more expensive. And maybe you need to. Maybe you need to look into it. Because I know there's Sherwin-Williams and stuff like that that's a different type of I guess a polyester paint. I don't know. I, I don't really want to talk too much on it because I really don't know a whole lot about it, but I know it's different. So you got to be really careful with that. So um, just as you get going, the, you'll, you'll learn more and you'll be able to save um, uh, a lot, you know, just by uh, getting a stock load of these, of the colors and then use them wisely. Looks like you kind of put a star on that little. Look how weird that ended up looking. Looks like maybe a star, but it's not. It's a cutout of that and that. Oh yeah. Isn't that, that's crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to see what this looks like in clear coat. But all right, that's uh, that's it. That's all we got. Kind of was long winded on that last question, but. Okay. Someone said, where do you pick up your 213 Steph Bella? I'm not sure. It says, thank you. Where do you... Oh, I missed it. You asked a question, but I'm not sure what the... You know what this means, thing? Yeah. Where do you pick up your... Panel? Oh, panel, maybe? Uh, yeah. If you're asking, if you're asking for the panel, you can get that lime line. And then someone just said concentrates way better build up than even the ready to shoot for my color. Yep. Oh, another thing I want to add on to that: if you're looking, okay, say like you're on a limited budget and you're want to you're wanting to get some candy paint, and you're not sure what colors to get, you're gonna want to go with the primary colors. So get gold get red and get blue because you mix blue and and yellow you got green you mix the red and the yellow you got orange uh same thing with purple you know uh blue and the blue and the blue purple blue and the red <laughs> blue and the red together to make purple so now you have the secondary colors too so you don't even need orange you don't need purple make them So he's saying, sorry, that last message wasn't finished. Where do you pick up your paints from? Um, you can go on Amazon. You, uh, after this is over, you'll be able to find the link. Um, but you'll get you'll be able to see the the black base coat, the clear coats. Everything is on that affiliate link there. So, and that's uh, by using that link. That's a way to kind of support this channel too, because I do get a little bit of a kickback. It's not much from Amazon, but I do get a little bit of a kickback on stuff that's bought there. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely 
we can definitely um, something. I think we did a. Did we do flames that we dropped sh shadowed one time? Yeah, yeah we, we can, can do, do that, that. definitely. Um, we we could have. I don't know. There could be a drop shadow put here, but with the black, it's really hard to tell. Uh, someone this made me laugh. Someone said we're going to be asking you about your candies just as much as we did the leaf spinners. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Where can I get the hood from? Uh, Limeline. The hood's on Limeline. Uh, on the affiliate link is, like I said, the best place. It'll make me like 75 cents if you buy one. All right, is that uh, we anything else that rolled in? Someone just said, um, my first paying motorcycle paint job was way back in 77. By the time I was 21, I had painted over 100 motorcycles, painted Harleys for $200 back then. I still rest, I still do restoration and custom paint. Oh my God, that's so $200, awesome. that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, 200 bucks back then. Nowadays, yeah. people are willing to spend more on uh, luxury items, I feel. So if you're asking, like if you're gonna paint a tank and two fenders for somebody, and if, I don't know, it kind of depends on your on the uh, yeah, in how good you can paint, and you know, it all depends on what you can do and how crazy it is. But you know, asking starting at two thousand dollars for a tank and two fenders uh, seems pretty reasonable nowadays, and then it can go up from there, depending on um, the graphics and your status as a painter. Um, your workload, if you're really busy, just raise your prices. That's what everybody should be doing anyways when it gets busy. So. And someone just said, just a couple more things I'll say here, then we can end the night and see them next Thursday. But someone said, can you do a pinstriping video soon? And then they just start asking, can you use tape with one shot or will it bleed under the tape? And they just said, that's one thing I'm most afraid of to try. Some of these dudes are ridiculously good. Yeah, they're good. Um, I don't, I'm not really a traditional pinstriper. That's not really what I do. And it's definitely tricky. Oh, yeah. Yes. He even had, we sat down one night and just did it. And it's hard. It definitely takes skill. Uh, it just takes that. practice. Yeah. It just takes practice. You got to practice for a while. And then in order to get good, you have to just keep practicing. You can get good enough, I feel like, in a short period of time. Um, but you can get, you can. I feel like um, with tape, you can move along a lot faster. You can get really nice effects just by learning the tricks of the trade with uh, using tape and, and stuff like that. He asked if you can use tape with one shot. Do you know if you can? No, do that? no. If you're if you're brushing anything on, you're not going to use tape. I don't think. I'm not a pinstriper, but I every time I would even think about using a brush next and painting it on next to tape. It's just going to bleed through underneath. Laying down tape is mostly meant for spraying, if you ask me. But maybe somebody does it. I don't know. I know that's it doesn't work for me. But you can pinstripe. If you want to put a double pinstripe on something, you can spray it out. You can you can tape it out and spray it out. You know, with an airbrush. That's just fine. Just like we did here. That, that could be called a pinstripe too, I guess. And then someone just said, is there, is, is there no way around a thousand dollars for an air compressor, two stage to shoot motorcycle body parts, base coat and clears? Probably not anymore. Um, I think mine is, a, uh, I, might, I know mine's a Harbor Freight. I'm not even sure if they sell the same one. I looked at last time I looked, they didn't have the, the same pump that's on mine. Um, but yeah, you're going to be like Twelve hundred dollars, I think, to fifteen hundred dollars. Unfortunately, you can get away. You can get away with it if you're not going to want to use air tools for sanding, um, and you're just doing motorcycle parts. You probably get away with a smaller compressor. But like I said, those the the pneumatic tools for sanding suck up a lot of air, and it's going to drain your tank, and you're just going to have to wait for it to fill up. It's really annoying. I've done it when I first started, and it's it's if, if it's the only thing that's going to get you going i guess do it if you already have the compressor just do it don't let it stop you 
trying to make it work and then upgrade. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's it, guys. Appreciate you guys every Thursday dropping in. But yeah. that's it. And I'll have a video tomorrow. Hopefully, all finished up. Quick one, two, three minutes uh, showing the process again. So you can kind of, um, if you want, check it out again. Have a recap. Recap. There you go. <laughs> All right. Re recap the dovetails. Recap the dovetails. All right, guys. Thanks All right, again. guys. See you next Thursday.